now comes for something very important. Okay. And that is the brick wall behind this whole thing. Okay. Now, before when we were talking about bump maps, we also had a little discussion about displacement maps. So as we can see, we've been using bump maps to great effect. We created a bumpy texture on the iron. We created a bumpy texture on the gold. On almost everything has a bump or normal map onto it. Okay, but we want to create a displacement map for the bricks because we want them to actually displace the geometry. Okay, so I'm going to create a new standard material. And uh, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, go ahead and call it brick. And then I'm going to double click it and make a new texture. And I'm going to um, go ahead over here to this little folder thing under textures. And I'm going to choose brick wall. Okay. And it brings in a brick texture map um, that that uh, you know is basically looks something like this. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag that onto the color of the Redshift standard material. Okay, and then I'm going to bring that brick texture onto this back wall plane that we made. Okay. Now what it does is that, as you can see, there's no sort of texture on this. Okay, um, it looks almost like as if we printed it onto like shiny paper, like wallpaper or something. It's not very convincing. Okay, it doesn't really look like a brick textured wall. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a displacement map. And in this case, a displacement map is going to be like a height field. It's going to use grayscale values to tell it the lighter a uh, the color of the pixel the more out it's going to be from the surface and the darker the color is the more you know inset that part of the geometry is going to be so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead into the plus we're going to say texture we're going to bring in a text we want to bring in a texture map okay and we're going to go ahead and we're going to bring in the brick wall displacement dot PNG brick wall displacement dot PNG. And this is what it looks like. So we're going to click open, click no. And you're going to see that what happens, it brings it in. Now, the thing is, is that we just like before when we had a normal and a bump map we had to put it in a bump node okay we need to create a displacement node so let's go ahead just ds displacement node right there so we're going to double click that and we're going to take this and we're going to pipe it out from here into the input into the text map of the displacement node and then we're going to take this displacement node, okay, here, and we're going to plug it into the displacement input of the output node, like that. As soon as we do that, 
nothing happens. Sorry to let you down there, but there's more stuff that we have to do to get the displacement map working. And it's kind of tricky, actually. I actually um, think that they're going to make this a little bit more straightforward in the future, but it's kind of tricky what you have to do. The first thing you need to do is on this back wall thing, we need to right click it and give it a RS object, redshift object tab, tag. So see, we've given it a redshift object tag. And in this redshift object tag, under geometry, we want to override its geometry because remember, displacement maps create new geometry. They're not like bump maps, which only affect the normals of the surface. Okay. And then what we want to do is after we after we uh, override the geometry, we want to click on enabled for the tessellation which is basically going to tell you that we want to tessellate the polygons. And then what we're going to do is we're going to double, we're going to click, we're going to enable the displacement. And still nothing happens. Okay. So this is sort of like where what we can do is we can up the maximum displacement to like 10, okay? And the displacement scale will also make that 10. Still nothing is happening. Actually, a little something is happening, okay? You'll notice that there is a little thing going on there, okay? Because where you really want to control it more is you want to go back to the displacement um, node you want to control it here. So let's say we up it to like two. Okay. Now you notice there's more displacement. Let's up it up at three. There's more. Let's actually go all the way up to six. Okay. And now we're really starting to see kind of like a nice displacement. Although the whole thing looks like it's covered with like a big coat of urethane because it's so shiny but we're going to fix that later okay so as a matter of fact why don't we fix that right now so the thing is is that what we're going to do is we're going to say actually before we fix that i do want to show you something if i go let's actually up this to eight just for the point of discussion okay and if i go to this edge here it looks flat here right but if you were to really look at this edge you'll see that that we are actually displacing the geometry of this thing it's not a flat edge here you see how ragged this is because we're actually displacing the geometry of the surface okay so now so having said that We now, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and we want to choose the reflection, I mean, not a texture map again. We want to bring in texture map, texture, okay, bring in under bricks, the brick wall reflection, which looks something like that. No. We want to pipe this into the roughness channel. And that's better. Okay, if let's say, for example, I wanted a little bit more reflection on those bricks. Okay, once again, I can go ahead and go over here and make a ramp. and bring this in to the input
alt input alt input which is what I find what wh which what I found works okay and we'll now go into the reflection and in the ramp okay let's make it so that way an easy way to do this is that we're going to make this so that the bright we're going to lower the brightest the brightness of it like that and that would have the effect of giving it a little bit more um, reflection see that it's more reflective 